It's the dawn of a new era in Las Vegas with new ownership and a new coach and the home side determined to put on a brand new show. From Cashman Field, it's Las Vegas Lights and Tulsa FC. It's USL Championship Soccer on ESPN+. With former USL and MLS goalkeeper Jeff Adanella, I'm Donnie Barnes. Tulsa didn't play last week, but Vegas did. At Memphis 901 FC, they got off to a great start. They did get off to a hot start, and that's not easy to do in your season opener anytime you have to travel across the country. You see the good goal here from Noel, who's able to dribble the ball inside, cut it across the goalkeeper's face. Always easy to do that when you're tucking it into that corner. They get off to a good lead, but it was Memphis who ended up having the final say in this one. You see Memphis is tied up here. The goalkeeper would have liked to do a little bit better with this one. He gets a good hand on it, but he's there to clean it up, and they would took a special goal to end. Vegas is night. If you see here, the USL goal of the week, he's able to put it in the top corner from about 25 yards out, right under the crossbar, right above the goalkeeper's hands. Memphis ends up getting all three points. We talked about the new ambition Vegas are showing under new owner Jose Bautista. How about going out and getting the two-time USL championship MVP, Solomon Asante? Whenever you're trying to start a new regime, it's not only important to send a message to the rest of the league, but it's also important to send a message to your locker room. We're going to go out and get a special player like Asante. You look at the stats that he's been able to produce within this league. Two time USL player of the year and not only the stats he brings a work rate he brings an attitude he just ushers in a new era of what Las Vegas Lights Football Club wants to bring and by going out and get a player like this it's a message to everybody that Las Vegas is taking this and they're trying to win meanwhile Tulsa's new head coach Mario Sanchez has made some big moves ahead of this season as well Similar to what Las Vegas is doing, Tulsa is trying to implement a new culture. And how you do that is you go out, you find the players that fit what you're trying to build, and they went all over the world to add these players. If you look at the list here, you have players coming from leagues all over, from the United States, from international. He's able to piece this together. But what's really important, I think, for Tulsa is the player that we're about to focus on, the players that they were able to keep. Uh, with those new faces, as you said, it's the familiar and proven Philip Goodrum who will be key for them tonight. He is the force that Tulsa has. He led the club in goals last year. If he's getting on the score sheet, it's usually a good sign for Tulsa. We talk about all the new additions, but you want to have the people that are comfortable in Tulsa. You want to have the people that are comfortable in the locker room and really just a leadership role that he's able to represent for everything new that's going on within the organization. It's two reloaded squads, two new head coaches with the same last name who both say they want to play attacking, pressing, exciting soccer. Who will impose themselves? on this game tonight and how many goals might we see as a result it's lights against golden white tonight in vegas and you stay here starting 11s and kickoff next is a proud sponsor of the Las Vegas Lights Football Club. Premium checking from America First Credit Union is so much more than a regular checking account. It's a saves you money, makes life easier, always has your back account. Because it's absolutely loaded with fantastic benefits and features. In fact, it comes stocked with so much awesome stuff, it was voted best perks by money.com. So make sure you're rocking more than a checking account. Head to America First and apply for the exclusive protection, perks, and paybacks of premium checking today. Desert Radiology is the area's chief resource for the highest quality medical imaging and diagnostic care. We're proud to offer 11 conveniently located imaging centers across the valley. As a member of the community for over 50 years, Desert Radiology is proud to be the official imaging partner of the Las Vegas Lights. To learn more, visit DesertRad.com. That's DesertRad.com. Let's go Lights! International. Great Clips. And Nevada Donor Network. The procession onto the pitch before the home opener for Las Vegas Lights tonight. 
against FC Tulsa. Donnie Barnes, Jeff Adanella, as we look at the first starting 11 at home for Las Vegas, coming off that loss last week, Jeff. A couple changes to the lineup here, but what's most important is I think that they're getting a little bit more of the continuity within the lineup. Last week, Coach had mentioned in our conversation, they had four starters who had only been with the team for one week before their first game. They get another week under their belt within this lineup to try to implement the system in which they're trying to do, which is a tricky system when, it, when you don't have that continuity within the 11. Here is the first starting 11 for FC Tulsa this year. They were idle last week. We didn't get a look at them last week, so this is the first starting lineup for Tulsa this year. This is the team that the coach was like, gives them the best opportunity to do what he wants to implement, which is a little bit of higher pressure up the field, bringing a good energy, and really just trying to create more chances within the team, because it's something that he felt that Tulsa was lacking last year, and this is the 11 that he's rolling out with to start this season, and we'll see how it all clicks coming off of their long preseason. Again, no relation between Mario Sanchez, the new head coach of FC Tulsa, and Dennis Sanchez, the new head coach of Las Vegas Lights. But two new philosophies, and again, both want to attack, and here we go, in motion, in Vegas. A new era for both sides. And who will triumph tonight as they look to begin that new era in the best possible way? It is FC Tulsa in their road black kits with the patina green, and Las Vegas in the lighter shade. And early on, an attack for FC Tulsa. Shouts for handball, which are waved away by referee Brandon Stevis. Oh, that would have been a dream start there if you get that call there. But a good early start here from Tulsa, trying to implement what we talked about before the game started. They want to step up their pressure, and they want to press higher up the field, and they want to create more chances off of their press. So look for Tulsa to be pressuring, especially on this back half of Las Vegas, really trying to create opportunities off those turnovers so that they can attack a little bit faster than what you saw last year from Tulsa. Early foul whistled against FC Tulsa. And Las Vegas Lights trying to settle things a little bit after just a slightly nervy first 30 seconds or so. Cashman Field looking good for this home opener. Again, so much new energy around this Las Vegas club under this new ownership group. Both these teams have had pretty short preseasons. Both head coaches coming in a bit late in the off-season process, not having as much time as you'd like to put a new team together. And that's always tough. In both of the conversations, it was a conversation of really trying to implement the styles in which the teams want to play. If you're Tulsa, they want to press a little bit higher up the field. They want to be organized. They want to be super attack-minded. And if you're Las Vegas, they're looking to build a possession-based concept where everybody needs to know where the next person's going to be on the field when you're connecting those passes because that's going to be the best way to get you out of a pressing team like what Tulsa's going to do tonight. Anytime you don't have enough time to implement those things, you're kind of learning on the fly. So it will be a little bit dicey from each team, I think, from time to time because they're trying to learn this new system. But when you talk to both coaches, they're both tactical. They're both mindful of the way that they want to play. And they're really just trying to implement what they want to do as they establish these new cultures. It's a bright start from FC Tulsa in these first couple minutes. That one deflected along and taken in by Austin Wormel. Here is the injury report tonight presented by Desert Radiology. A couple out for Las Vegas. Tulsa pretty healthy as their season starts, and that's actually a rare luxury. A lot of times you get some knocks in preseason. Not the case for FC Tulsa. They're in a good spot. First attack now for Las Vegas. Down this right-hand side, Solomon Asante, who we highlighted in our open, is fouled and a free kick. Our keys to the match for Las Vegas. These are presented, of course, by Silver State Schools Credit Union. You have possession of the ball higher up the field for Las Vegas and dangerous in transition for FC Tulsa. If you're Las Vegas, what we talked about last week is they were able to have 60% possession, but most of that possession was in their defensive half. Las Vegas wants to have that possession up the field, and if they're able to establish that, then you have Tulsa back on their heels a little bit more, so you're able to move them from side to side and really create those gaps. And if you're Tulsa, how can you do it off a of transition? They talked about wanting to be at attacking minded. Well, you're going to have a team that's playing possession based. Can you turn them over, and can you attack the goal from those turnovers when the spaces are created? Can Las Vegas produce from this set piece? Swung in, headed to the edge of the box. Volley struck against a wall of black shirts. It was struck really well. It was struck really well. It's a fast start to this game already. You can tell the tempo is going to be high. Energy's flying. Las Vegas' first home game, Tulsa's first game of the year. The energy is very high. The buzz has already been a, a quick start to this one. Wait for this to settle down a little bit so you can see a little bit more of what each coach is trying to implement. But here in the early goings, can teams just settle down a little bit, calm their heart rate, try to settle that possession so you're not dumping so many long balls, and settle into what you've been working on all preseason long. So Arthur Rogers taking this throw for FC Tulsa, one of those off-season additions 
coming off two sensational years in USL League One with Northern Colorado Hailstorm, where he led the league in assists each of those two seasons. A deadly set piece taker as well. I think that one of the fun things about the USL Championship this year is you see so many players who have come up from USL League One. It's just proof that if you prove yourself in League One, you're going to get opportunities to play within the championship. And these two teams are great examples of that, especially when you're looking at Tulsa. You look at the guys that they've added. There are so many pieces that have come from a League One team who they're expected to make an immediate impact on this championship roster. And that's one of the beautiful things about USL, that if you're playing well in League One, you're going to get your opportunities to show yourself at the top level. First corner kick of the match presented by Jaritos be taken from that far flag. And referee Brandon Stevis wants to sort something out before it is. Really fast start to this game already. You're seeing a couple set pieces. You've seen a couple different opportunities to really fast start out here in, in Vegas right now. Yeah, it's been a fun opening to this game, which we suspected it would be. These are two teams that do not want to just sit back and defend. Flat delivery, top of the six. Really good delivery as well, but out for a goal kick. Aimed in the direction of Nico Goodrum. As a longtime former goalkeeper yourself, you're mentioning these early minutes, especially an early season match. Everybody's excited. What were you always trying to do to settle your back line and your guys down early in a game like this? Just trying to talk to them and, and a situation like this. I think that as the game goes on, you're going to see a Vegas team that wants to play out of the back and they're going to try to build. But when energy's high, when everyone, everything's flying around you, sometimes playing the ball long and clearing it out from your back line is a good way to just settle everybody down so that you can get your positioning on the field and everybody just kind of take a deep breath and relax. And once the game starts to settle in, you realize it's just another game you've been playing this your entire life. But in the first couple minutes, just playing smart because you can see that the energy is high. Don't buy into it. Don't, if you have to skip lines of pressure by playing the ball long, play the ball long. Let things settle down. So you see a situation like this where Tulsa was flying high. They were pressing high. You play the ball long. It ends up back at your feet. And now it's trying to calm down and play the way that you want to play. Hmm. I guess now trying to indeed play their way out. A bit more possession for them. Flying scissor kick there along the touchline. Speaking of excited early in the game, Bubakar Diallo, a spectacular attempt to keep that ball in play. Now, FC Tulsa coming off a 10th place finish last year in the Eastern Conference, moving over to the West this year. 10th place, a little deceptive. They only finished two points out of a playoff spot. It was a very packed and tightly contested last couple weeks as they tried to cram into those playoff places, but still, below where they obviously would have liked to have finished. They are very optimistic that much better times are ahead very soon, and they win the ball back here in a promising position. Into the box it goes, and a strike from an angle is, I believe, touched around the post by Austin Warmel. It will be a goal kick, though. Apparently hit the side netting before Warmel got a paw to it. Those are the situations that we talked about in the open, right? One of the keys to the game was, can Tulsa turn Las Vegas over when they're trying to build up that possession and go straight to goal? And that's what you see here. Whenever Las Vegas is going to have the ball, it's a good attempt here by Yosef. He puts the ball just a little bit wide. Maybe he could have played that across, but you're never going to fall to forward for going for goal when you have that type of opportunity. But those are the types of keys to the game that we're talking about. With a team like, with a team like Las Vegas, they want to build. They want to keep possession. They want to pass the ball. They want to have players coming in, coming out, finding those different gaps so that they can eventually stretch you out and find those gaps to find those killer balls. Well, if you're Tulsa and you're playing high pressing, the opportunities that you have on a bad pass to turn them over and go straight to goal, that's when you get Vegas stretched, and those are when your opportunities are going to come. So you see it earlier here. I think it's going to be a theme for the game, and unfortunately they weren't able to make the most of it, but that's something that you're going to have to keep an eye on all night. Eventually they do turn it over in the middle of the park. They go right to the attack. Stojanovic stretching out, unable to reach, and JC and Gondo taking it back for Vegas. Long switch out of the back that time, chested down. Edison Ascona playing it safe. That's a great switch of the ball there because something that Tulsa is they're stepping up and they want to and they want to press as you're keeping that possession. Those long balls over the top where you can skip those lines and reestablish that possession. That's one way what we talked about getting possession higher up the field. Sometimes you just have to skip those lines and find those target forwards so that you can reestablish your line of possession 
higher up the field in Tulsa's half. That's a great switch there from the center back. This is Sean Smart. Emma Clementa able to skip some lines himself, then trying to thread through Coleman Gannon all the way through to Michael Creek. Well, fans, welcome to the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix. Throughout the month of March, the USL will be kicking off across the country. Join us for all the action on ESPN and CBS Sports platforms. The Las Vegas fans making noise in the supporters section, but it's FC Tulsa almost able to square a good opportunity for Stefan Stojanovic. A couple times Milo Yosef has gotten loose down that right side. Yeah, that's part of, that's part of the issues here with, with Las Vegas and the build-up and the possession. That's kind of something that you have to deal with when you're a possession-based team, is when the ball turns over, you're going to be stretched. clement has been busy already. It's only 10 minutes in, but he's had to put out two or three different fires. But that's going to be the theme for Las Vegas this year. They're confident. They want to be on the ball. They want to control the ball. And sometimes when you control the ball like that, that means you're going to have to do some one-on-one -on -one defending. So expect for these center backs. Oh. And there's the opening goal. Arthur Rogers with the delivery and Stefan Stojanovic on the score sheet. 10 minutes in, perfect start to the new season for FC Tulsa. They lead 1-0. It's a perfect start to the season for Tulsa, and we just talked about Clementa. He's been having to be busy, but Sajakovic does a great job of getting in front of him on this cross. We talked about the importance of turning the ball over. Tulsa turns him over in a dangerous spot. It's great service inside, and the forward is able to find that spot right between the outside back and the center back for the nice header in front of the goal. It's a great cross, an even better finish in front of the net. We talked about how Tulsa needs to turn them over and be dangerous in the attack, and that's exactly what you saw just 10 minutes into this game. Uh, putting the center back Clemente under pressure, under pressure, he's able to find that gap. Great finish from the target forward, and Tulsa doing exactly what they wanted to do. They want to be attacking-minded, they want to implement their style of play, and you've seen that in the first 11 minutes of their season, and they're rewarded with an early goal. And so it is Mario Sanchez who gets to celebrate 10 minutes into his head coaching career. And Arthur Rogers, who we spoke about right after kickoff, leading League One in assists the last two seasons, already on the board with his first assist in USL, USL Championship. That's a great ball, and he has time. He finds his space on time. He picks his head up, and he's able to pick out that target forward. It's a great cross in and already having an impact in this championship league. Las Vegas looking to respond. Gannon couldn't quite stretch for that. And then the foul is given. Blaine Ferry, the man fouled. Yeah, I apologize for talking over that one, but the turnover happened so quick. That's what we've been talking about. The turnovers happen quick when you're playing in this type of system that Tulsa wants to play, and they were rewarded. Their first 10 minutes, they've been pressing, they've been pressing, they've had the better of play, and you love to see when better play gets rewarded with a goal. And Stojanovic has gotten himself into some good positions early on. Didn't get service the first few times he got there, but definitely did that time. Yeah, and he made no doubt about it right in front of the net as well. It's a strong, powerful header into the back of the net. Is Stojanovic. Played collegiately at Marquette University. Very good program in the Big East. And now for Las Vegas, how do they steady themselves here? Punched in the mouth early in their home debut. I don't think you're going to see Las Vegas change what they want to do when we talked about the type of system that they want to play. This is how they want to play. I think that it's all about can you keep that possession and do things like this. Get possession higher up the field to put yourself in dangerous spots. Smart with the cross. It nearly reached Corey Bennett. And that's the best moment so far for Las Vegas. Captain play as well, and they'll have an attacking throw. But it's just what Coach Sanchez has talked about when we talked when we discussed with him about we had possession, but we kept possession in our own half of the field, which isn't very dangerous, and it's hard to break a team down when you're in your own defensive half. So can Las Vegas, what we talked about keys to the game, can they keep possession up here? Keep possession on your half of the field. It's a little bit hard because Tulsa's compact like this, but get that possession a little bit higher off the field so your possession leads to dangerous chances because that's what keeping possession is all about. Forward from Clementa. And Gondo. The whistle goes. Free kick for Las Vegas. And it is the first booking of the night as well. Stefan Stojanovic was shown a card for this. 
This is another way to slow down Vegas' attack. If you have tactical fouls, when you can eliminate that counterattack so you can get everybody behind the ball. You can't do that too many times because you're gonna pick up yellows for it, but that's another way to slow down a possession-based team is smart tactical fouls when they have the opportunity to have dangerous parts of the field, especially in the middle. Eventful first 14 minutes of the year for Stefan Stojanovic, a goal and now a card. This game, this game feels like it's flying right now. I feel like the pace of this game is really high. You're getting opportunities either side, fouls, possession. Things are going on right now. It's playing at a really fast pace. Corey Bennett fouled that time. Another free kick for Las Vegas that time. It was Rashid Tete whistled. Corey Bennett, another player coming up from League One. He was with Charlotte Independence the last couple of years. He came into preseason on a trial this year and earned his contract, Dennis Sanchez told us this week. Not a guy they necessarily had nailed on to make the roster. Bad turnover by Tulsa now, and an opportunity to strike, but high and wide from Coleman Gannon. It was a good second wave of pressure there by Las Vegas to create that opportunity. You want to see, you want to see these shots hit targets, so you're forcing the goalkeeper to make a save, but when you talk about playing in the other half of the field, missed touch here, Good back pressure, able to turn it over. He takes his touch inside, picks his head up. Unfortunately, he didn't hit the target, but I love that attack and mind, that mindset from a player where if I'm going to get the ball a touch inside, I have it on my good foot. I'm going to have a go at goal. You're 20 yards out. I appreciate the effort. Good, good response here from Las Vegas early on, especially when we're talking about going down one nothing at home. Michael Creek with the goal kick. Straight down the middle, Stojanovic was a bounce away from being in again. Yet another foul. And uh, Brandon Stevis has a little bit of a, a job on his hands here just to keep a lid on this one. It's, it's not a malicious start to the game, but as you've said, it's just really high pace, high intensity, lots of challenges flying in. It's very fast paced. I think because of the dynamics of the field that you're seeing, everybody's right on top of each other a lot. So you're gonna see a lot of those contact fouls. You're gonna see a lot of, not as much space as you would normally see. So it's one of those situations where guys are gonna be running into each other pretty much all night. And it's important for the referee. You just don't wanna let it get it carried away, right? You don't wanna see anything malicious. You don't wanna see tempers flying over, but you know, a little professional fouls here and there, a little tic-tac fouls, that's always going to be okay. There's Corey Bennett coming deeper to try to maintain possession and then looking to win it back, but this time committed the foul as he chopped down Nico Goodrum. Corey Bennett will do that. He'll range all over the field looking to win the ball back for his team, which you like to see from your center forward, but a little overzealous that time. Yeah, sometimes you need that back pressure, though. If you see that the player has space and you need your target forward to come back in, get a good little challenge. And I thought he got all ball there, but like we said, it's been a little bit of ticky fouls, so right now the ref's going to favor the foul call. And I think something also important to remember in this game is these set pieces, because of the field dynamics, they're all in dangerous spots. So defensively, you have to really be switched on no matter where you are on the field because you could put a ball in the box pretty easily here. Justin Portillo plays it along low. Goodrum touched it along, looking for the run of Bubakar Diallo. Didn't quite get the contact right, and it's out for a throw. Justin Portillo taking that set piece. He was a guy that FC Tulsa head coach Mario Sanchez pointed to midweek, telling us that he's just been amazing in preseason. Has emerged as one of the leaders of this team. Has taken to Sanchez's new system really well. This one worked clear acrobatically. Corey Bennett heading along and a chance for Vegas to break. On the run is Edison Ascona. The black shirts hustling back. Ascona goes one on one against Arthur Rogers. Rogers stays on his feet and shields it out for a goal kick. Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. How did you choose as a goalkeeper where along your six yard line you wanted to take a goal kick from? A lot of it depended on where my target was. So if you're aiming for your target forward, they dictate, you know, sometimes you don't want to make them run across the field because they're doing all the hard work. So if the target forward is in an area, usually that's something that you talked about before the game. We want to target this player with this player if we're hitting the goal kicks long. So you have an idea of what you're doing directionally. But what you'll see a lot of goalkeepers do now is put the ball right in the middle because your offense, your team's going to spread out a little bit more. It gives you the opportunity to play either side. You can play out of the back. You can play to that target forward. So as if you're not going as directional as Tulsa did in that, 
that moment, usually just putting the ball right in the middle so you can stretch the team out a little bit and really have 1v1s across the field is what you're looking to do. Distribution, such an important and sometimes underrated part of a goalkeeper's job. Casual fans know you're supposed to make saves, but there's so much more to it, especially nowadays. And it's, it's something that's evolved with the goalkeeper position, and I thought that was an interesting point when we were talking about when we were talking about what Las Vegas wants to do is bringing in warm-up was an important part of their of, of their recipe because when you play in this type of system, you need a goalkeeper that can skip lines, that can distribute and create overloads and mismatches in the numbers, especially when you're trying to bid out of your back. So bringing in warm-up was a point that they had because not only can he make saves, but because of his ability to play with his feet, which if you look across the world now, if you if you look across soccer, a goalkeeper being able to play with his feet, it's almost not, it's almost not something that's special now. It's a necessity because so many teams want to be able to bid out of the back. And if your goalkeeper's not confident with your feet, you're not able to do that. One of the best in the championship at playing with his feet, said Dennis Sanchez this week. Nearly 20 minutes in, FC Tulsa with the lead. As they scored in the 11th minute through Stefan Stojanovic with the gorgeous assist from Arthur Rogers. As you said, Las Vegas, a pretty good response since then. Had a couple half opportunities. Does look like Tulsa is pretty content to try to pick them off on the counter, try to create those turnovers, as you mentioned, and then strike quickly once they do. That's what I was excited about this game for. It's a little bit of a chess match because you have contradicting styles. Tulsa, they want to be on the ball, they want to play, but they're also mindful that, you know what, if you want to have the ball, that's okay. We're going to press and we're going to try to turn you over. Whereas Las Vegas, they want to keep the ball, they want to keep possession, they want to spread you out and get the ball really moving and really dominate possession. So it's a nice little chess match in terms of what you're thinking about tactically, and these coaches are going head-to-head -head with it. Tulsa has the better of it right now, but once this game settles in a little bit and Las Vegas is able, if they're able to establish that possession higher up the field like we talked about, it'll be interesting how this game plays out and which one ultimately wins. Free kick coming for FC Tulsa. Really sharp looking kits tonight for both sides. It's a beautiful backdrop too. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you got the wide look of the of the stadium and you have the mountains in the background. Really beautiful night out in Vegas. It's such a different environment around this Las, Le Las Vegas lights club this year since the takeover of Jose Bautista in January. A renewed focus on putting together a competitive winning club. There's that beautiful backdrop. Yes. Great place and a great night for soccer. So far the visitors off to a great start. Through the middle comes Bubakar Diallo. Looking to split the lines ahead of him, didn't quite thread it through. That's good shielding of the ball by JC and Gondu. Joe Zhao. Emra Clementa. Good hold up play by Corey Bennett. Forward it goes for Coleman Gannon. This is the best moment so far for Vegas. What can they produce from it? And Gannon's ball is out. First corner of the night coming for the home side. They earned a corner from it. That's a better That's a better example of the build-up that you're looking for. Bennett does a good job checking in. He holds up the play, and then he's able to play the ball wide. And when you get the ball wide, you want to run through the middle, get the ball wide, create those opportunities. There's one v one opportunities so your players out wide can create something special. That's a better example of what Las Vegas wants to do. And a lot of that comes from Bennett being that strong target forward so you can relieve that pressure and then play off of what he's able to do with the defender on his back. Jarrito's corner kick for Las Vegas. Midway through the first half, jostling at that near post. Brendan Stevis looking to sort that out. Edison as Kona saying, I'm not doing anything. Yeah, the ref's going to be busy tonight. I have a feeling the ref's going to be a little bit busy tonight. Alexis. Or Alexi Suwahi, another player up from League One last year. Plenty of experience at the championship level previously. Gannon's delivery low toward that near post, flicked along, and then struck from the edge of the area and wide. A bit of confusion between two Las Vegas players on who was going to hit that. 
Yeah, a little bit ambitious there on that attempt, but at the end of the day, you don't want to you don't want to let Tulsa counter off that corner kick, so I don't mind it. But if you're able to put your foot on it, try to regain that possession and do something, maybe get the ball wide because you have all those numbers in the box, that might have been a better option. But anytime you can anytime you can prevent Tulsa from getting off and running in some type of transition, that's a good thing as well. That ball left a bit short, and Stojanovic got there, but couldn't get full contact on it. It was off him last. It's a goal kick, but FC Tulsa, again, hunting those mistakes from Las Vegas, and they nearly had one there. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication there from the defender and the goalkeeper. I think that the defender tried to lay it back, but he didn't quite get it there. Maybe the goalkeeper wanted him to clear it. Just a little bit more clear communication, especially early in the season until you're on that same page where I know what my defender's going to do. I feel comfortable getting this ball back. Just a little bit louder, a little bit clearer communication from the goalkeeper there will go a long way. How shredded would your voice be by the end of a season with all the shouting you have to do as a goalkeeper? Was it an issue at points? No, I mean, at, at times, if the, if the environment was very loud, some some places that you play, the environment's so loud that you almost don't even feel the need to talk because you know they can't hear you <laughs> anyway. But there were definitely certain moments or certain games where your voice hurt more than others because maybe the defenders just needed a little bit of a wake-up call. Dueling number eight's there, but it falls on the edge of the box. And what a strike! And it's 2-0 to FC Tulsa. Nico Goodrum. Oh, they can hear him now. And this outstanding start for the visitors continues. 25 gone. 2-0 FC Tulsa. You cannot hit a ball better than what we just saw from Goodrum here. Look at this absolute laser. And again, it comes off of a turnover. They're able to force this turnover in Las Vegas' half. Goodrum finds his space. He puts his head down. Absolutely nothing the goalkeeper can do. A good player with that much space. That ball is knuckling. It's moving all over the place. You cannot hit a soccer ball better than that. Celebrate that goal, young man. It's your first one of the season. What a finish. And again, it comes off of a turnover. We talked about Tulsa pressing Las Vegas, making the most of those turnovers. That was going to be a key to the game. And Goodrum with an absolute laser into the back of the net. And you're not getting that one if you're a goalkeeper. Great finish, great turnover. And again, Tulsa's on the road, and they're off and running here early in this one. That's one of those goals that if you're a goalkeeper, you die for it. You know you're not going to get there, but you still have to die for it. You tip your cap and you say, nice finish. But again, if you're Vegas, you have to be careful when you're playing this possession game. You cannot turn the ball over back here or else you're going to get punished. And that's what we're seeing early on. Yeah, really difficult beginning for Vegas now. Still a lot of game left. There's another one of those giveaways, and Arthur Rogers takes it back this time. Tracked and bothered just enough. That's off him last in a throw for the home team. Other games in progress around USL Championship. Orange County SC on the road at Pittsburgh, leading 1-0 about an hour in. Pittsburgh lost 1-0 last week as well. And the Riverhounds, of course, finished first last year in the regular season. A bit of a difficult beginning for them, struggling to find the net so far. Sacramento Republic leading the Miami FC 1-0 on the road in South Florida. 68 minutes gone in that one. We're full scoreboard at halftime, of course. Talk about a dream start to the Mario Sanchez season here with FC Tulsa. They talked about wanting to be more aggressive. They wanted to make opportunities. He said that last year he didn't think the team created enough opportunities and they weren't aggressive enough. Well, within the first 30 minutes of this game, you're seeing a team that's aggressive. They want to put your team under pressure. They want to press high up the field. And when they turn you over, they're going to be dangerous. So exactly what he was talking about, what they tried to implement early in preseason, is what you're seeing here early in the first 30 minutes. Well, Philip Goodrum, quite a start to the match for him. He's been involved quite a bit anyway. Certainly involved a moment ago. Anytime a player gives the the hands cupping over the ears celebration after a goal, you know, there was probably some talking that was happening before that, whether it was with some fans or opposing players. Austin Wormel. Corey Bennett coming back to try to win that flick. And another free kick for FC Tulsa, and Goodrum clattered that time by Sargis. 
So a little bit of early frustration here from Vegas. They need to settle back down, keep playing their game. They've been trying to implement the system, and that's going to come with that's going to come with some sometimes you're going to take some lumps. Can they settle back into this one? There's still so much time left in this game. They don't want to get too frustrated because they don't want to see two turn to three. Keep the score line here. Try to keep a cool head. This is when you need your leaders, the people that you have brought in. Calm everything down a little bit. Try to regain momentum in this game, and do the best you can to get one on the score sheet before halftime. Well, they will have defending to do first of all from this. Again, it's Portillo and Diallo around it. Interesting angle, played short. It's Rodgers who's come to this near side, swinging it back post, up into the air, and out for a corner. There's Arthur Rodgers. He'll drift all over the pitch, looking for angles from which to deliver dangerous balls into the box. I like what Tulsa's doing early with their set pieces. You can tell that's two now that they've done it straight from the training pitch. They, they're identifying something. They're trying to do a couple different plays. I wouldn't be surprised if they have three or more up in their bag of tricks that, you know, we're not just going to dump the ball in the box right now. We're going to try to implement something that we've been working on during preseason. Second Jaritos corner kick of the night for FC Tulsa. Half hour in to their season. Well, another discussion here with referee Brandon Stevis. Ascona involved in these quite a bit at either end of the pitch in this first half an hour. So now the Jaritos corner kick. Lifted out swinger. Philip Goodrum got his head to it. Rogers was marauding for it. Punched, not fully clear by Warmel. By the end line, the cutback kept in play. Cleared out only as far as Rogers. He was able to beat one man. Now clips it in with his left this time. Not usually his favorite foot, but he can still be dangerous with it. And now the whistle goes and the pressure relieved for now for Vegas. And Milo Yosef forcibly separated. Although he would say, I didn't have a problem. Let's see that again. Continues to be a very uh, emotional first half. Yeah, loose ball foul here. Two, two guys just going after it. Does a good job shooting the ball, able to draw that contact. But this is what we talked about. If you're Las Vegas, this is an opportunity for you to control your emotions. You don't want to let your emotions get the best of you right now. You're arguing with the ref. You're down to nothing at home. Discussions with the ref, discussions with the ref. Settle down and play your game. You're trying to implement a new culture. You're trying to do things a little bit differently. Settle down, settle into the game, try to play your game, and worry about getting the next goal. Right? You don't want to be arguing with the ref. You don't want to be fighting. You don't want to do all these extracurriculars. Settle down, try to play your game, keep your head in the game so you can get one back and try to keep the momentum back, get the momentum back on your side. Well, eFootball 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship club. eFootball is free to play. Download now. Now, Las Vegas really want to get one back before halftime, obviously. Still very much in this match if they score the next one. They'll have a free kick here. Corey Bennett continues to do his best to be involved. Had some good moments in that match at Memphis last week. It was very direct, had a couple strikes on target, forced a couple good saves. He's going to be an important part for this Las Vegas system going forward because you need that big target forward who can help you relieve that pressure when you need to hit the ball long. So his role within this team is going to be very important. Look for him to be that big target, of course, for crosses at the end of it, but to be that target forward to hold off the center back, give your team the opportunity so you can regain that possession when you're in, the defense, when you're in Tulsa's defensive half. Good ball in toward the penalty spot. It was Rogers who was able to clear it. Eddie Baruman into the mix again. Initial header was won by Hayden Sargis. Second ball was cleaned up by FC Tulsa. Las Vegas on the attack once more. Coleman Gannon. And 
didn't make a clean contact with it. Sliced it out of play for a goal kick. Lots of decent moments for Las Vegas in this first half. FC Tulsa, though, much more cutting edge when they've had the opportunities. Yeah, they've taken advantage. They've taken advantage of the times they're able to turn you over, which if you're Las Vegas, try to settle the game down a little bit. Can you use your width? We've been seeing the overlapping runs around the outside. Well, let's get Asante involved in this game. You brought him in. He's a crucial part of what you're trying to do. Can we get him out right? Can we, can we find ways to get him in 1v1 situations so he can create, maybe create a shot for himself, maybe create an opportunity where he can clip that ball into Bennett, but just a little bit more creative creativity from Las Vegas higher up the field so they're able to create dangerous chances because possession without dangerous chances is just that. It's just possession. But you want to have possession to get yourself going towards the goal and involving some of these key players that you've brought in as a way to get that going. Stojanovic committing the foul there. He doesn't think so. Just over 10 minutes until half. Another free kick for the home side that time. Blaine Ferry whistled. See Tulsa very close a couple times there to creating another turnover in a dangerous part of the pitch. Whistle goes again. 35 down, 10 to play in the first half. FC Tulsa executing their game plan very well so far. So far, Stojanovic in the 11th, Philip Goodrum in the 26th. Sean Smart having to chase that one back and then elude Blaine Ferry. Does well. Bennett lays it off. Good movement to Joe Zhao. Can Zhao pick somebody out? Looks to chop it to the end line first. Zhao with a cutback. Took a deflection. And it will be a corner for Vegas. That's what we're talking about. That's much better there from Vegas. And that starts with Smart in the back. He's able to dribble to break that first line so that they can overpass that line from the forward and then create that dangerous opportunity for your teammates. A good 1v1 attack here. Able to draw that corner kick, create a dangerous opportunity for yourself. But that's what we're talking about. Smart takes the initiative on himself, breaks that first line, creates that opportunity for his team, so then you're able to draw that corner kick. The subsequent ball lifted in too high for Corey Bennett. Edison Ascona. It's been in the middle of a lot in this first half. Well, the USL Championship is on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. Catch live matches and expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Golazo Network and ESPN Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete USL TV listings. Rogers picking that up in lots of space. Not a guy you want to give space and time to deliver across. In towards Stojanovic, who chases it down by the end line. Gets it back. Las Vegas looking to play their way out on this compressed pitch. And they do so dangerously, but successfully. That's part of why Las Vegas are going to be entertaining to watch this year. They will play a high risk, high reward kind of style. Smart for Bennett. That's Kona. Zhao. That's Kona again. Clementa. Seeing some of these good passing sequences for Las Vegas. They need to have it turn into end product. It might here. Flicked along. Bennett nearly had it fall to him. Comes to the edge of the area, and Zhao looks to bend one, defend it away, and out for a corner kick by Rashid Tete. A couple great last ditch defending there from Tete. He does a good job blocking that initial one and gets across in, and then follows it up with a block shot. But it's the center back who's up here making the difference here for, Va for Las Vegas. Clemente continue his run, adds that extra number to the box. Great defending here from Tete. Last ditch defending there on the tackle, and then he's able to block that shot. But much better there from Vegas. They're able to throw numbers forward. Establish that possession a little bit higher up the field to create this dangerous chance. Go, 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 go. 
Harito's corner kicked in. Delivered to the six yard box. Thumped to the edge of the area and struck with venom. Just wide. Well, that was traveling and it looked goal bound for a moment. Hit by Edison Ascona and hit really well. It's that second wave here. He does a good job, puts his head down, has the opportunity. It looked like it, like it might have nipped the post a little bit. It's tough to tell, but he hit that ball with some serious venom. A lot of movement on it. He puts that shot on goal. It's in the back of the net, but that's a little bit better from Vegas. We talked about establishing that pressure up the field. They want to have possession in Tulsa's half. We just saw it for a little two-minute spell there, and they were able to create one, two dangerous chances. So a little bit more of that, and I think Las Vegas will find themselves right back into this one. Michael Creek's goal kick out into touch. Las Vegas hoping this little bit of momentum they've been building can tell on the score sheet before halftime. Sometimes all it takes is a couple good opportunities to feel like you're back into this game. You can see it here, they're establishing that possession higher up the field, which is what they want to do. Keep the ball moving side to side, make Tulsa run, make them run, make them burn their energy so you can create those gaps and find those opportunities. Smart able to sidestep Milo Yosef. Trying to split everything for Corey Bennett. Cut out by FC Tulsa. Not able to keep it for long. Yosef tracking back again. Milo Yosef has put a ton of energy into chasing and pressing around the pitch in this first half. Rogers swings it away. Philip Goodrum thought he had won that cleanly, but the referee disagrees. Free kick Las Vegas, final five of the first half. Las Vegas getting on with it quickly. Edison Ascona by the end line, ran out, and it is a goal kick. I'd like to see more of this from Ascona. He's done a good job of getting on the end of the ball, trying to create a little bit more. He needs to go find the ball. If the ball's not coming to you, if you can't find it in those gaps, go and get it. You're a creative player. You're someone that's able to start the attack. You can play a dangerous ball. You can take players on 1v1. When you have special players like that, go find the ball. Go hunt the ball. If they can't find you, go get it yourself so you can get on top of the ball and really dictate the way the game's been played. I think he's had an impact here in the last three or four minutes, and that's why you're seeing Las Vegas able to have that possession a little bit higher up the field. Find your special players. Let them create. Let them do things for you. And if they can't find you, go get it yourself. Start creating. That's what you're there for. Back for Austin Warmel. Didn't appear to connect with it cleanly. And trying to play in Goodrim again. Taken easily by Warmel in the end, but Philip Goodrum was nearly in there after striking from outside the box in the 26th minute for FC Tulsa's second goal. It's nearly clean through with a chance for the third. That's a neat ball through the middle. Coleman Gannon has moved to that left side now. And this is Zhao. Joe Zhao, Solomon Asante. He's been rather quiet in this first half. Player goes down for FC Tulsa and play is stopped. And that's Yosef. Yeah, unfortunately, just not on the same page there. He thinks that he has the opportunity to leave it for the overlapping runner. Wasn't sure that there was a defender there. But that's much better from Vegas. Get this possession up the field. Get creative in that side of the half so you can create these different opportunities and find these special players. Unfortunately, just not on the same page here with the overlapping runner, but the idea is right. I like the idea. Switch the field of play, try to get these guys out wide so you can either create an opportunity for yourself or whip the ball in. Took them a little bit to settle down in this one. There's only a couple more minutes left in the half, but you can see the philosophy. You can see what they're trying to do. And when they're able to do it the right way, when they're able to do it the way that they want to in the parts of the field that they want to, that's when the opportunities are going to keep coming for Vegas. Philip Goodrum has been in the middle of everything for Tulsa in this first half. Won the flick on there. Joe Zhao racing the other way, though, for Las Vegas. Still time for them to pull one back before the break. Ascona. Je 
Passed it down by Smart, but couldn't keep it. See the total shots, seven for FC Tulsa, five for Las Vegas. FC Tulsa with two on target, the only two on target of the match, resulting in the only two goals of the match. That's what you need to do on the road. When you have those opportunities in front of that, you need to be clinical. You need to take opportunities because you're not going to get a lot of those on the road. So Tulsa, two for two, obviously they've done a great job of taking those opportunities when you have those chances in front of that. Vegas still probing and searching for an opening before halftime. At halftime, we'll have a feature on Jose Bautista's acquisition of Las Vegas Lights. Of course, have news and notes around USL Championship, live scores from around the league. And of course, highlights and stats from the first half of this one. Deft back heel or deft flick that was from Asante. And here goes Gannon. And Gannon miss kicks. And it's a goal kick, is it? Referee initially pointed for a goal kick. See, we awarded a corner now. Looks right. like he has. Yeah, it should be a corner. It came off of Tulsa last, but a good job by Gannon. He doesn't get the kick off, and he reestablishes that pressure to force something into happening. But you look at that flick from Asante. That's what you need to do to get to get the ball to special players because they can do special things. Over the head kick creates a corner kick opportunity for his team with one minute left here in the first half. So this latest Haritos corner kick for Las Vegas taken short as Kona. Clipping it back post, but nobody there. And now it's a goal kick. It takes time, especially when you're a new group of players under a new coach, to develop that chemistry, that understanding. Perhaps an example of it there. Yeah, exactly. So I think on that one, the kick just doesn't come off. But I think that what you're seeing with Vegas is you're seeing the principles in which they want to establish. I think early in the game, Tulsa did a good job of forcing that pressure. Maybe the nerves were a little bit high. They weren't able to settle in the game that they want to. But you see the principles in which Las Vegas wants to play with this year. And I think a big part of that is making sure that you can get the ball. I've said it a few times, but make sure you can get the ball to your special players who are able to create. Because you need players who can take players on 1v1. You need people who can create for other people within your team. So finding these special players, getting the ball to them, letting them do what they do best. And of course, trying to eliminate situations like this where you get turned over in your own half. Bubakar Diallo with a long run forward before he was finally halted. Still 90 seconds to play in this first half. Goodrum fouled hard. Free kick FC Tulsa. They're not in a great hurry to take it. They will be perfectly happy to take a two goal lead into the break. Justin Portillo, part of that double pivot sitting at the base at that midfield and this falls to Arthur Rogers hits it first time into the box looking for Stoyanovich and it's been a really good connection in this first half Rogers and Stoyanovich and Goodrum earns another free kick very late in this final minute of the first half Let's see if Tulsa, if they have another thing they're going to pull up off the training pitch, if this is another situation where they can pull something out, try to create a special opportunity, if they're going to go with the dump it in the box, try to create something off of that. But important moment here for Vegas. You can't let this one in before halftime. It's most likely one of the last kicks of the first half. So important moment. You've settled things down a little bit more, but now it's time to step up as a defense. Make sure that you win this ball. Do not give Tulsa another opportunity. Lining up at the top of the box. Portillo over it, but leaves it. Headed clear, and foul was whistled for anyway. One more free kick for Las Vegas before the end of this first half. And Brandon Stevis asks for the ball, and now blows for halftime. And there are the first 45 minutes in Las Vegas for this season. Second game of the year for Las Vegas Lights after being on the road last week. 
first first half of the year for FC Tulsa on the road and it went quite well from their standpoint goals in the 11th minute from Stojanovic and in the 26th from Goodrum has them 2-0 up at the break your thoughts on the first half Jeff I think for Tulsa it went exactly the way that you wanted it to you were able to jump on them early turn them over in their own half create those opportunities get those two good goals but then if you're Vegas you started to settle in this game a little bit more the 2-0 scoreline is always a dangerous one to have especially if you're on the road for look for Vegas to try to settle in the way that the last 10 minutes of that first half and then create some more opportunities to get themselves back into this game in just a moment we'll have a feature on Jose Bautista's acquisition of Las Vegas Lights FC there he is in attendance today not quite the score line he's hoping for so far, but still another half for them to turn things around. And of course, we'll have stats and highlights from this first half and more from around the league. At the break, FC Tulsa 2, Las Vegas Lights nil. They want. With Clip Notes, we save your haircut details. So it's one less thing for you to worry about. And when I see that confidence at the end of the cut, that's everything to me. As a stylist, I know it can be hard to find time for a haircut. With the Great Clips app, you can put your name on the list from anywhere and head to the salon when it's time for your cut. A great haircut plus more time for what you love. That's Great Clips. Hello, my name is Ramon Martin del Campo, City of Henderson police officer and former Las Vegas Lights team captain. My mother, Susie, desperately waited for a second chance after years of fighting kidney disease. Through a paired kidney exchange program, she was able to receive the gift of life through transplant. Currently, about 85% of Americans waiting need a kidney transplant. I am a living kidney donor. Nevadans are giving. Join us at wearenevadans.org. Comprehensive cancer centers, the most advanced treatments and breakthrough research are helping our patients thrive, but some of our most powerful treatments are preventative. This begins together in our community through awareness, outreach, education, and support. From healthier living and self-checks to screening for early detection, we can now find and treat some cancers before they strike. We're doing this together, Southern Nevada, and teamwork saves lives. This match is presented by Southern Nevada Water Authority, by La Bonita, Silver State Schools Credit Union, and Comprehensive Cancer Centers. Two nil at halftime, FC Tulsa leading on the road at Las Vegas Lights here at Cashman Field. But it is such a new era and so much renewed optimism around this Las Vegas Lights club after they were acquired by Jose Bautista just a couple short months ago. And let's see and learn more about Jose Bautista and his ambitious plans for this club. I love to win. Relentless pursuit of winning is what makes me who I am. I'm the, the dad of four girls that's uh, busy with business and trying to stay active physically. You know, my girls are my pride and joy and they keep me plenty busy. Being a dad is, is my number one job. Uh, in addition to that, just doing stuff when it comes to business. Even as an active player, I went back to college and got my college degree with, with a business major. That um, curiosity has led me to my involvement with the USL and the purchase of the Las Vegas Lights and seeing what these guys do day in and day out on the pitch, um, I can't help it but to be amazed. Growing up in the Dominican Republic, the game wasn't very accessible, but uh, that didn't make uh, my love for the game be any different. There's a lot of things that I feel like I can bring over from my sports career to understanding the landscape in which you have to perform and then figuring out the best ways to cause positive impact on a daily basis. Being good with teamwork and leadership and building a winning culture is something that's natural to me. So I'm hoping to bring all those elements into now the ownership of the lights. 
Building a great relationship with the community and having a positive impact is extremely important for me as a person first, and then uh, for, for the lights as, as a business. That uh, entertainment factor, that um, way to unplug from everyday life, uh, and, and how people can rally around the common theme of rooting for a professional team is something that I'm hoping to, uh, to bring to the table. The thing that I want uh, the fans to know the most about me and what I'm going to try to do with the, with the franchise is I don't like losing, but I love to win more. So I'm hoping to make that a reflection of the organization as well. There's going to be a lot of work to be done in the background to make that happen, but I'm uh, excited about that challenge. been really fun watching Jose Bautista in his first couple months with this club and he's not just a, a hands off absentee owner very much involved and you saw him here tonight hoping his side can rally in the second half more from around the league news and notes coming up next. Go get it Doug. <laughs> When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. They're hungry for the women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. Just like real camping. Ugh, we even have real ants. You know what? Like I said, real camping. When ants show up, so do we. Terminix it. Desert Radiology is the area's chief resource for the highest quality medical imaging and diagnostic care. We're proud to offer 11 conveniently located imaging centers across the valley. As a member of the community for over 50 years, Desert Radiology is proud to be the official imaging partner of the Las Vegas Lights. To learn more, visit DesertRad.com. That's DesertRad.com. Let's go Lights! Back at halftime, 2-0 FC Tulsa leading Las Vegas Lights at the break at Cashman Field. As we take a look at news and notes from around USL Championship this week. The USL to field 47 clubs in the 2024 Lamar Hunt US Open Cup competition. USL Championship clubs will enter the competition in round three in the round of 32. And USL League One and League Two clubs will enter in round one, which begins this week, just a few days. Uh, the 2023 USL League One Player of the Year, Trevor Ammon, winning the Week One player of the week at the championship level. No issues for him making the transition so far. Scored a big goal for Sacramento Republic. No, it's a great start to the season for him. And like we've been talking about, anytime that you're able to have a player step up into this league, make an immediate impact, that's exactly what you're looking for. And I just want to give a shout out to Matt Van Oakle. He was playing, I played against him in a championship game in 2012 and he's still doing his thing. Congratulations, Matt, on getting named the first team of the week. Love that new team of the week graphic. Playing three at the back, apparently. So as we look around the league, Louisville City holding off El Paso on the road. Good win for them away from home. Indy 11 also defeating Memphis 901 in Tennessee. Loudoun United, really good victory for them. 3-1 over North Carolina FC, who of course moved up from League One last year. And Rhode Island FC rallying late in their debut 
at home for a 1-1 draw. Their first point as a club against New Mexico United. Live around the league, Sacramento Republic 1-0 over at Miami FC. And uh, Orange County SC, a late goal, and they defeat Pittsburgh Riverhounds 2-0. Tough start to the year for Pittsburgh after such a sensational regular season last year. You see Tampa Bay leading San Antonio 1-0. That's a really good showdown there. Detroit City on the road at Colorado Springs, a snowy Colorado Springs, up by a goal at half. Later tonight, Monterey Bay home to Phoenix Rising and Oakland Roots taking on Charleston Battery. So... A strong first half from FC Tulsa. We'll look at highlights and see how they took this two goal advantage in just a moment when halftime continues. Second half, just a couple minutes away from Cashman Field. All right, team. I'm not angry. I want to know who broke this. Uh, I want to make sure this doesn't happen again in the future. We found this tangled up in the transfer rollers. Who did this? AIS is a proud sponsor of the Las Vegas Lights Football Club. As a great clip salon stylist, I love giving customers the look they want. With Clip Notes, we save your haircut details, so it's one less thing for you to worry about. And when I see that confidence at the end of the cut, that's everything to me. As a stylist, I know it can be hard to find time for a haircut. With the Great Clips app, you can put your name on the list from anywhere and head to the salon when it's time for your cut. A great haircut plus more time for what you love. That's Great Clips. theater <laughs> spare bedroom why not both use the u.s bank mobile app to apply for a home improvement loan it's easy wonderful alex hey that's what u.s bank is for anything else how about a loan for a bigger car our family is growing oh yeah my brother's moving in with his five dogs oh hey -oh. and we're expecting ah. oh. expecting what help for today planning for tomorrow you at Coming up on the second half, FC Tulsa with the two-goal edge after the first 45 here in Las Vegas. And let's see the highlights from that first half. Replay clips presented by Great Clips. And it was FC Tulsa getting off to a hot start in the opening 10 minutes. Yeah, they did a good job of reestablishing their possession here. And Rogers with that great ball. And we talked about how lethal he is on the cross. And you can see the perfect example here. Sandovic able to find that space in between the two defenders. It's a absolutely perfect ball. Served it up on a platter. And he makes no mistake early in this one. And really got the momentum of this game swinging in Tulsa's favor early when you get a goal like that early on. Yeah, FC Tulsa able to win multiple balls high up the field. Stojanovic wrestling for this one, and it would fall eventually on the edge of the area for Philip Goodrum. And boy, he didn't need a second invitation. Bang, what a hit. That's a great place for the ball to fall if you're Tulsa. At the feet of Goodrum, he's able to pick his head up. He sees that he has space, put that head back down, and hits an absolute laser. Look at the way that that ball just sails up right into the top corner. Celebrate, young man. It's a fantastic goal to give the team a 2-0 lead. And that was really the first 25 minutes summed up in this game. Reestablishing their pressure, making the most of the opportunities in front of that if you're FC Tulsa. Halftime stats brought to you by U.S. Bank. In the shot, 7-5 to five in FC Tulsa's favor. The big difference, they had two shots on target, and they were both in the net. And I think that these stats really tell the story of the game than what you're looking at, and really what we talked about beforehand. You look at the possession. Vegas has 72% possession, but it's possession that they need with a purpose. Possession going to goal. Tulsa has 28 possession, two shots on target, two goals, because they were able to turn them over, which is what we talked about before the game. So can Vegas take advantage of this possession a little bit higher up the field and make FC Tulsa suffer a little bit more defensively? Our second half kickoff is presented by Comprehensive Cancer Centers. Kick cancer in Las Vegas for more than 40 years. And it will be Las Vegas to get us back underway, attacking from right to left in this second half. And the white kits 
FC Tulsa still in the black with the patina green. Referee Brandon Stevis gets us back underway. And can Las Vegas rally in this second half in their home opener in 2024? Certainly showed some things late in that first half that would suggest they have the opportunity to do that, but FC Tulsa will continue to be dangerous on the break anytime they turn the ball over. Yeah, exactly. But I, like you said, I do like what Las Vegas was able to do in those last 10, 15 minutes of the game because they were able to establish that possession higher up the field. And you're seeing opportunities like this come about, which in the first 25 minutes of the game, you weren't really seeing that much at all. An early tumble down that right side. It's a goal kick. Nothing given by the referee. Sean Smart was hoping there would be. He's made a difference in this game, too. I think you saw at the end of the half that he was taking more initiative in the attack, right? Now you're seeing him making these overlapping runs, putting the pressure on the Tulsa back line. And I think for I think if you're Vegas, you want to see those outside backs getting a little bit more forward so you can start overloading the width, stretch those players out, try to find the middle of the ball and create those dangerous opportunities once the defense is split out like that. But that's been a good job from Smart. He's really made a difference on the way that they're able to establish that possession. It is a narrow pitch here in Las Vegas. But you still do have to use the width of it sometimes, don't you? You have to. You have to use every inch of this field. When you're playing on a narrow pitch like this, especially when you want to, want to establish position, you have to take up spaces on the field in every which way that you can. So whether that's one of the wing players tucking in so that your outside backs can make those overlapping runs, just finding all those different gaps in all those different pockets so you can spread out Tulsa's defense as much as you possibly can. So once you get that ball moving, once you get Tulsa players moving side to side, that's when Bennett's able to pop up in those pockets. That's when you're able to get those ball to the special players in 1v1 situations. Long from Michael Creek. Down brilliantly from Rogers and then shielded by Ferry. And a free kick for FC Tulsa. That's really well done. We're seeing the skill from Arthur Rogers. It wasn't just his delivery and his assist in the first half. First, he had to beat a guy and create that half yard to whip the cross in. So that one's given away. What can Las Vegas create from it? Down the left side, they come with Jow and his cross. Just a bit over hit, run down by Gannon. Gannon from that other side, up against two black shirts, pulls it back. First attempt was blocked. Sean Smart persists. And Gondo. This won't quite, won't quite break for Las Vegas just yet. This is where, if you're Vegas, this is where you want to keep the ball. Keep Tulsa pinned into their half. Keep them defending like this because the gaps you're going to create, and if you don't find the gaps, you're going to have an opportunity to get a cross off for a shot. Asante in. Corey Bennett was hoping to shield it off and have a strike, but it ran past him. A little bit of sustained pressure for Las Vegas early in this second half. Kept in traffic by Ascona, and he's fouled. Free kick. Much better there from Vegas, and that's what we're talking about. You see how deep Tulsa has to defend when they're able to establish that possession higher up the field. And that's how you create opportunities like this. There's a lot of bodies around. As Kona, we talked about him earlier in the first half. Get on the ball. You're a special player. Create something. In this situation, he takes on three defenders, draw the fouls in a very dangerous spot for his team. That's what you want to see out of your special players. And especially when you're Las Vegas talking about where you want to keep possession, that's a perfect example because Tulsa's forced to defend all 11 within their own box. So you're able to create that space and you're going to get opportunities like this. Austin Wormel setting up the five-man wall. Asante with the hit, but immediately stares at the sky. Not his best. It's up and it's good. No, I'm just kidding. But those are the different opportunities that you're going to be able to create when you're establishing those types of possession. And of course, when you get those chances, you got to make the most of them. You're down 2 nothing. At least put the ball on target. He knows that. That was just a miss hit. He went to do something a little bit special. Maybe try that Ronaldo free kick where you're able to get that knuckling ball. Sometimes those balls don't come off, but that's much better. It's a bright start for Las Vegas. This ball falls and might be an opportunity. Into the middle it goes. Philip Goodrum almost had it fall to his head. And there's that instant danger that FC Tulsa pose when they do gain possession. This is Rodgers now. The back heel. Rodgers continues the run. Arthur Rodgers, his cutback headed away. And then juggled across the end line, and this will be a corner. Again, Arthur Rodgers at the heart of things, along with Philip Goodrum for FC Tulsa. And this is what you have to be. This is what you have to be careful with. Your Vegas, right within that possession. That's how quickly the ball can turn over. But again, it's Rodgers getting to that end line, putting a dangerous ball in, making sure that these Las Vegas defenders have to chase a little bit. Well done here from Rodgers getting around and really just making it a difficult situation for Vegas to have to defend. 
Perito's corner kick for the visitors. Justin Portillo ready to outswing it. Plays it low. Lots of space off the bar. That close to 3 0. Blaine Ferry inches away from extending the lead. Oh, we talked about it in the first half, how Tulsa has had two, three set pieces right off the training pitch, and this is another example of it. They see something in the defense. He's able to find that gap and almost pulls off the perfect set piece. That would have been one they would have been talking about all week in practice, and this is why we practice these set pieces so much. It almost comes off, but the space was there. Good job by the Tulsa coaching staff identifying that spot and putting that play in place. Clever footwork from Edison as Kona at the other end to keep it for Las Vegas. And we're still in this game. Just. And on the edge of the area, Gannon with his back to goal. And Gondo. Hit from distance, cannoning off a defender. That was Alexi Suahi who got the block in. And hammered out a play and a throw for Las Vegas. I really like that from Clemente. He's a center back, but he's comfortable on the ball, and that's what you need in this system. If you see that much space, take it. If they're giving you that much room to dribble up, you can have a hit from 25, 30 yards out. You're a good player. Take that strike. I like seeing that, and that way, too, it creates that opportunity to keep pushing Tulsa's back line further and further and further back. So if you see that space, if you're a center back, take that space. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be a playmaker when you're just because you're a center back. It's another little spell of sustained possession in the attacking half and attacking third for Las Vegas. This will be an inter part, interesting part of the game if you're Tulsa because Tulsa likes to press, right? When they see the ball in the back half, they like to press. But how good are you at block defending? How good are you when Las Vegas has this type of possession. There's Jow into the box. Gannon, can he work some space for a shot? No. Blocked down and picked up by Rogers. And he might spring the break for Goodrum, who goes over the top. Offside. And Stefan Stojanovic, who had a goal and a yellow card within the first 20 minutes of the match, was well ahead when the ball was released. That's what you need to be careful of if you're in Las Vegas. If he stays on side, that ball's in play. It's a one-on-one -on -one with your goalkeeper. So you want to just, you're chasing the game a little bit. You want to have this possession. But always be mindful that Tulsa's very good on the counterattack. And all it takes is one ball to put him in over the top. Bennett looking to slip somebody in. By the end line as Kona. Jow. Baruman. Free kick is... Hayden Sargis was caught. I'm talking about having to defend in a low block sometimes, your FC Tulsa. And that is something that new head coach Mario Sanchez told us this week. They really don't want to do a lot of this year. He felt last year they defended much too deep and invited too much pressure and too many shots against. It's a heavy collision there and another whistle. So they want to defend as high up the pitch as possible. But as you said, when you have a lead, especially on the road, and the second half wears on, a lot of times you're going to be pressed back a little bit. We'll see if that ends up being the case tonight. Sometimes it's only natural. You don't want it to happen, right? If you're Tulsa, you want to defend higher up the field. That's what you talk about all week. You talk about those principles. But when you're up 2 nothing on the road, sometimes that's just part of the way that the game plays out. So it's about not wanting to be there, but being able to be comfortable in that deep block. Because if you keep everything in front of you and you're able to not give up those different gaps, everything's okay but it's when you're not comfortable being able to defend that way that protecting a 2-0 lead gets a little bit gets a little bit more challenging because the situation is going to present itself we're going to end up back there more times than not in from portillo another gorgeous ball philip goodrum was arriving at that back post didn't make a clean connection with it, it was off a las vegas player last banged off that corner flag it's a throw Arthur Rogers will take throw ins as well. Assisted the opening goal in the 11th minute. They extended the lead in the 26th, FC Tulsa. Goals from Stojanovic and Goodrum. Diallo's attempted cross not hit the way he would have liked. Kept in play, though. 
And the sequence continues, but Diallo diving in again. He has been full-hearted in his challenges tonight. And Stojanovic tracks it down. Flicked along, falls to Goodrum. And now Rogers. And Rogers cross deflects and kept out just by Austin Warmel. Acrobatic goalkeeping. That was headed inside the far post, I think. Great bit of goalkeeping there. He's able to keep his feet moving. Well, they come again here. And another opportunity, and there's number three. It had been coming, and it's Yosef who bags it for FC Tulsa. Milo Yosef in the 56th, and they are flying away from home. They might be flying home with all three points tonight. That's a great bit of reestablishing your pressure if you're Tulsa. That's the third goal that we've talked about. It's come off of reestablishing their pressure in Las Vegas' half. And Yosef does a great job of picking out this side corner. It comes after a fantastic save from the goalkeeper. They're able to regain that possession. It's a difficult angle, but when you're able to tuck a ball into that far post like that, there's not much that a goalkeeper can do. Takes on the defender 1v1, finds the side netting. Well done there by Yosef. And another great team goal there from Tulsa. They get the opportunity off of a cross from Rodgers. The goalkeeper makes a great save. That second wave of pressure that the coach was talking about, what they want to establish, attack-minded defending so that you can create opportunities. That's exactly what you see again for the third goal. That's three goals that's come off of. And that's a great finish there from Yosef tucked into that side netting. Well, again, FC Tulsa lethal when they have the opportunities tonight. This will be the first change of the night for Las Vegas. Ricky Alba on for them, replacing Corey Bennett. Substitutions presented by Desert Radiology. Well, Corey Bennett worked hard tonight. Really was willing to drop deep, willing to do whatever he had to to try to defend from the front. Didn't quite come off for him. Yeah, unfortunately, didn't get a lot of opportunities to get on the end of crosses. Vegas hasn't had a lot of opportunities to cross tonight, but maybe a fresh change of pace, seeing somebody a little bit different will bring a new energy to this Vegas attack. Asante's attempted cross deflected out. Gets back on it quickly. And Gondo. Baruman. And trying to ladle it over the top, but simple for Michael Creek. so cliche in soccer to talk about cutting edge or end products, but some nights that's what it comes down to, and Tulsa have had it over the first hour tonight, and Las Vegas have not. Well, when you talk about especially what they're trying to establish here in Tulsa, it's how lethal can you be? How dangerous can you be? We want to be attack-minded all the time, even when we're defending, and that's how fast things can turn over when you're playing this way. Las Vegas has the possession. They're moving the ball side to side. But when they turn the ball over, when you're playing a team that's comfortable being in a counter-attacking mode, the goals can come quick. They can come out of nowhere. And that's what we've seen today. Turn the ball over, ball in their half, attack-minded, go to the goal, create opportunities. And that's three goals that have gone exactly how you would draw it up if you were at Tulsa today, coming up with the game plan, coming into this one. They've been lethal, they've been clinical, they've won the ball in dangerous spots, and they've gone straight to goal, which is tough for any team to defend, especially when you're spread out trying to keep that possession the way that Vegas is. That's Kona trying to press there, but that was handled really well by Bubakar Diallo. But if you can't watch the match, turn on Sirius XM FC 157. That's North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Plus hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more. All on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. Here come FC Tulsa again. Into the middle it goes. Nodded away by Eddie Baruman. Only as far as the top of the area. And Blaine Ferry's left-footed effort into the arms of Austin Wormel. He's been close a couple times tonight, Blaine Ferry. Tulsa really not taking their foot off the gas either. They're still pressing high. They're still making it hard for Vegas to build. So sticking to their principles and what they want to implement. Well found on the left side. Ascona 
up against Rogers. Cuts to his left. Across the face of goal, and there's one back for the home side. Their first goal on home turf this year. Ricky Alba just off the bench a few minutes ago on the score sheet. And with an hour gone, it's not over yet. 3-1. This is a great answer here from Las Vegas once we get another look at the goal. We talked about getting Ascona the ball into space. And if you're if you're Tulsa here, it's a little bit too much space. You give a player like Ascona room to make this run down the byline. He plays a perfect crawl in, and the substitute's able to get in front of that back defender here. Great ball across, play the ball hard across the box. Dangerous things will happen, and good job here by the substitute getting on the end of it, putting it in the back of the net, and really keeping his team in this game. His team needed that. They needed this goal, and they needed it quick. Get that momentum back in your favor. Make sure you know that you can score that goal. Try to regain this possession and get control of this game. Try to get this momentum back in your, back in your favor, because a two-goal lead is one of the most dangerous ones to have in sports. 30 minutes to go. See if Las Vegas can keep this momentum on and keep this pressure going. What a fun game. I mean, it's not been as fun from a Las Vegas perspective, but just got a little bit more so. And boy, if they could grab another, this gets really interesting. It's been nonstop action. The whole game's been really back and forth. Both teams trying to be in that attack-minded mode. Even when Tulsa's up by two goals, three goals, they're still thinking about attacking. And Las Vegas done a good job settling the game. We talked about get the ball to your dangerous players and good things will happen. As Kona gets a one-on-one -on -one situation, the Tulsa defender did a good job shooting him to the line. You'd like to see him get a little bit closer so he can't get that cross off. But you whip the ball in hard on the ground across the goal box. Dangerous things are going to happen. And fortunately for them, they're able to get on the end of it and get on the score sheet. Oh, and Gondo was almost able to slip Asante down that right side side back with Alba touch was a bit beyond him and this is where FC Tulsa you would think would want to settle things down a bit at the next opportunity even though again that's generally not the kind of style of play they're going to want to have for most of this year and this is part of the growing process. Tulsa, if they, have, if they have a lead like this on the road, they need to learn, they need to keep that possession, they need to figure out how to ride a game out like that so you're not just defending, 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 defending. So this is a part of the learning process in the system that they're trying to create because when you have a lead like this, it's not always easy to just go attack, attack, attack. That's not always going to be the mindset. So you have to be comfortable. We talked about defending in your block. Can you get your block a little bit higher up the field but then be comfortable within that block so you can try to ride this out? Long diagonal ball and a good one, but it eluded Joe Zhao. It's a bit of a missed opportunity for Las Vegas. You don't know what it would have led to, but they were having bodies piling forward in promising positions. Not a bad start to this. Not a bad start for Alba either. I think his first touch on gets, him, gets himself <laughs> in the back of the net. Sometimes those are the types of opportunities you need. You need a little bit of luck if you're a forward. Ball comes in across, you get the opportunity, you make the most of it, get yourself on the score sheet. And that's all you need sometimes to get that momentum going. Another one of those balls over the top. Looking for Jow, but he put his hand on the back of Rogers and is whistled for that. So Stojanovic in the 11th, Goodrum in the 25th, Yosef in the 56th for FC Tulsa, Alba with one for Las Vegas in the 61st officially. Creek smartly taking a little extra time over that free kick. Yeah, I have a feeling you're going to see a little bit of that from Tulsa here for the rest of the ride out. Shouts for handball, nothing given. We play on. And now the whistle goes. Bubakar Diallo asking my foul. Not sure what the response was. Given away in the middle of the park. One right back by Las Vegas. Philip Goodrum, a little tug. Advantage played by the referee. On we go. And on Las Vegas go down this right side. Dancing into the box. Attempted cross from Sean Smart. Right off the defender. Now from distance, that was off of Asante. I believe he was offside, and now the flight goes up. Here's Michael Creek now with the ball in his hands. We're gonna have a, a substitution. This is Harvey St. Clair coming off the bench for FC Tulsa. And he's replacing Arthur Rogers, who made a big impact in his championship debut with FC Tulsa. Grabbed the early assist in the 10th minute on that gorgeous cross. It was knotted in by Stefan Stojanovic. And several other very good attacking moments as well.
25 minutes of the 90 remaining. Las Vegas continuing to possess. Looking to work something down the right with Asante. Asante claiming a corner. And he gets one. That's a great switch of play. Anytime you're able to get these players out wide in 1v1 opportunities and they're Eddie! creating something. Maybe it's a cross, maybe it's a shot, maybe they draw the corner Eddie! kick. But setting your players up so they can take players on 1v1, that's what you want to do. Great job there, good switch. Good job by Asante driving straight at the defender and drawing this dangerous corner kick. So Dennis Sanchez hollering at his player. Push up. He wants bodies in the box here. Looking for another goal back. Right high in the air. And there's a foul. And FC Tulsa can calm things down again. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on crosses that Asante would be the perfect target when you're talking about whipping a ball in. But unfortunately, you'd like to see him challenge a little bit. But again, that's better from Las Vegas establishing this pressure. And like I said, I'm interested to see how Tulsa responds to this. They need to establish a little bit of possession so they're not sitting back, sitting back and defending. So. So far, this chess match has been a fun one. The game hasn't exactly, you know, it hasn't been, the scoreline's been a little, little bit challenging for Vegas, but you're seeing the tactical differences in these teams on full display. One back by FC Tulsa. Here's Ferry looking to square it across for Milo Yosef, who was hunting his second goal of the night. Would have had a great chance at it. Headed toward the final quarter of this match. Stepping up to win it back, Harvey St. Clair just off the bench. It was not kept in play, and it's an FC Tulsa throw. FC Tulsa next week will be at Orange County as their season opening road swing continues. They will head further west, and they hope to do so with all three points. One by Yosef. <laughs> what a battle, and it's turning into quite a physical one with Sean Smart, who nearly suplexed him to the ground there. Free kick coming for the visitors. There's a good recovery here by Smart. I thought that he might have picked up that initial foul on Yosef, but the ref decides not to call it. It's a good recovery here. Looked like he got the ball first. I'm not really sure how they ended up in the position that they did, but anytime you're suplexing a player down to the ground, you're probably going to end up with a foul call. But I thought the initial challenge looked good. It's just when they all when they got that altercation in the air, then he ended up getting the foul called against him. But I thought the first tackle was a good job. He got his foot on the ball. It was a fair challenge until the slight body slam at until, the end. Yeah, until until he busted out the wrestling <laughs> move. So it results in this free kick. Top of the six-yard box, and Stojanovic got there, but couldn't get over it and nodded it well over the bar. Vegas got away with one there. If you're defending on these set pieces, you got to keep your you got to keep your hand on him a little bit. You don't want to grab him, but at least know where he is so that he's not able to win that challenge over you. You had four or five defenders in the box of your Vegas, and then Sjokovic is able to get his head on it. That can't happen. They got away with one there because that was a good look for him if he heads that back down across the goal. Las Vegas next week will stay here at home, and they'll welcome El Paso. their third match of the season. FC Tulsa playing their opener tonight after being idle last week. And both these coaches making signings relatively late, much later than you'd normally like to before a new season because both took over in January. St. Clair. Paul's not going to run out of play. Had to be played by Las Vegas. This is a good little sequence for FC Tulsa, even though it's not resulting in any chances. Just a, a few minutes off the clock, not a lot happening. Things calming down a little bit. Yeah, slowing down. And this is really the first little bit of, bit of time that we've seen them just trying to keep possession within the other half. So it's good for them to practice that. It's good for them to learn that. And again, you get a situation here where you can try to turn it over, which is what they want to do. But good little spell there. Two or three minutes, we're able to have the ball. Ball goes out of bounds, reestablish the possession. Ball goes out of them again. So a little bit good spell of possession there, which we haven't seen much from them tonight. We haven't had to see much of it, but we haven't seen much of it. 
flick on one by Alba. It's a great job there from a target forward to win that header with the defender on your back like that. That's how you establish this type of possession. You need your target forward to be big. Tulsa able to play their way out, however. Ferry knew the challenge was coming, spun around it, thought he was going to get a free kick. But we go on. Free kick for Las Vegas, 20 minutes to go. Game in one of those lulls where it feels pretty safe for Tulsa, but it could reignite at any moment. Yeah, that's when it starts to get dangerous is when you start hitting these lulls, but I think Las Vegas is doing a good job of reestablishing this pressure, and they've done a much better job of moving the ball side to side to get this team moving a little bit. So in a pitch like this, an opportunity can come out of anywhere, so I think it's important for Tulsa to stay on edge a little bit here, even though they're up with a two-goal lead. Coleman Gannon seen a lot of the ball tonight. That will stay in play for Asante, will it? His cutback did really well to get to it, but handled well by FC Tulsa and Philip Goodrum. It's been a little quieter in the second half after such an active first half where he scored a banger and was involved in so many other ways and he has a free kick for his side and he's absorbed a lot of contact tonight. Yeah, a player like that, that's gonna happen to him anytime that you're strong on the ball the way that he is and you know, I know it's a long season, but he's going to have to get used to taking knocks like this, which I'm sure he is with the amount of minutes that he's played already. Substitution for FC Tulsa. Blaine Ferry is coming off. And being replaced by Camilo Ponce. Played at Wake Forest back in his college days, originally from Amityville, New York. I thought Blaine Ferry did very well tonight. Yeah. Bit unlucky not to score a couple times. Yeah, he did. He did. He played his role well, but sometimes, you know, when you're making substitutes like that, it's about getting not another guy opportunities, but also just getting some fresh legs out there. First game of the season for Tulsa. Not everybody's going to be 90 minutes fit, but also you don't want to tack on all these minutes. You want to give somebody else the opportunity to play as well. But he had a good night tonight. He did his role. He did his part for the team. And, you know, it's time to make way for somebody else, get those fresh legs out there, try to bring a little bit more energy back onto the field for him. This is Gauso Samake, Samake, excuse me, Samake on for Las Vegas. Replacing Solomon Asante. Never fully sparked to life tonight. Had some half moments of danger. Yeah, a little bit of a quiet night from a player like Asante, but anytime that you have a player like that and you're implementing into a new system, you need to kind of learn, you need to adjust, you need to figure out how to make advantage of his skill set within your system. How can we get him the ball more in dangerous places? Is it getting him a little bit wider? Is it tucking him inside to flash inside? That's something that they'll figure out as the season goes on, because if you go out and sign a player like that, you need to figure out how to use him within the frameworks of your system, and that takes time, right? We talked about how Vegas hasn't had too much time to implement this. Coach got in new. They had four starters last week. Who was it was their first week with the team. So these things like this take time. But within the time that you're going to prepare and you're going to start setting your team up, you need to figure out ways to get him the ball in dangerous areas so that he can do what he does best. Stojanovic tackled from behind. Free kick. Las Vegas disagreeing with the decision. They haven't agreed with many foul calls tonight. Well, let's see it again. I'm not sure Clementa needed to make this challenge. It looked like he had teammates around the ball. Well, it actually comes in at a decent angle, it looks like, when you see it back there. Yeah, he comes in at a decent angle, but Sarkovic does a good job. He feels that that pressure's coming. The ball's out in front of him. He feels his tree, he feels the feet picking up, gets tripped up from behind. A good player, a good forward like that, you're going to foul and you're going to draw that foul call all the time. So I understand the complaints about the foul call because he did make an attempt for the ball, but at the end of the day, he tangled up his feet, the player falls down, the ref's going to call that. Subsequent free kick, another good delivery, and it's just wide. They have been so dangerous from set pieces tonight, FC Tulsa, and that bodes really well for them. It was Alexi Suahi who, I believe, got his head to it in the end. Las Vegas needing to reignite that attack for these final 15 minutes. 
Tulsa have been able to just calm things down over the last 10 or so. It'll be a throw here as we are 75 minutes in at Cashman Field. Stoyanovich, Goodrum, and Yosef for FC Tulsa. Alba for Las Vegas. Somehow, Las Vegas win that ball. Square to the top of the area and taken on, pawed down by Creek, able to gather at the second attempt. It was Edison Ascona who's been involved quite a bit for Las Vegas tonight with the strike. Yeah, his energy, his energy, and when he gets on top of the ball, has made a big impact in this game. Ultimately, it's an easy save here for the goalkeeper, but you're tw 18, 20 yards out, you have the opportunity to take a look like that. I, enjoy, I appreciate the hit. A player that we haven't talked about much tonight that I want to shout out because he's done a great job and I think he's very important within the system is Ngando. Every time that you see them winning the ball, he's able to win that ball. He's able to switch the side of the field. He's an important part of this piece of what Las Vegas is trying to build because if you watch his movements on the field, he's either moving to create space for his center backs to dribble up the ball. He's winning the ball in the middle of the field and he's breaking lines with long touches and he's able to get the ball wide to the playmakers. We haven't said his name much tonight. Usually a player like that in that role, you don't mention his name much on the highlights because he doesn't come up in the highlights, but he's going to be an important part of this team team going forward and I think that the work rate that he's had tonight and the way that he's able to win the balls break lines with the dribbles or create space for his teammates is such an important part of what this team wants to be it's just something to take notice of if you're watching Vegas throughout the course of the season just how important his role is within this lineup because I think he's played a very solid game tonight yeah that's a great point and especially for these home matches when you play on such a narrow pitch that center of the park becomes even more important and critical that you win balls in that area. Every team wants to build through the middle. Ideally, you're building through the middle so you can either work the ball out wide or you work the ball out wide so you can end up back in the middle. But he's such an important part in not only that, but cleaning up the counterattacks that they're going to be facing and then starting that transition. He's done a great job of that all night tonight. Samake, and the flag was up. Well, a new era of USL kicks off in April. Join us Saturday, April 6th on CBS as Louisville City FC takes on Indy 11 at 4 p.m. Eastern at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, kicking off the first ever national broadcast of the USL on the CBS networks. It's a great game for it, too. It's going to be an exciting game. What an opportunity for the USL. Just an opportunity. It's awesome to have this game on CBS. It's going to be so much fun to watch. Always a great environment at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville. Here come Las Vegas down the spine. That is JC and Gondo, who you're just mentioning a moment ago, carrying the ball up the pitch, giving his team a chance. Then an unfortunate deflection ends that particular attack. Tulsa about to make another change. They're going to send Nathan Worth onto the pitch in just a moment, we're being told. Goalkeeper needs to be careful here. Don't want to hold the ball for too long. <laughs> what were some of your favorite tricks to waste time when your team was nursing a late lead? A lot of rolling the ball out, so if everybody drops back, if everyone drops back expecting you to punt it, you hold it for as long as possible, and then you roll the ball out and make them come get to you. Or if there's a slow rolling ball and it's coming to your box and no one's chasing you, putting your foot on the ball and dribbling it to the furthest corner away of the 18-yard box, waiting for them to get exactly as close as possible for you to pick it up. Just little things like that, a little bit of gamesmanship, but I take pride in the fact that I, I played, I had the most minutes played, this is a fun little stat about my career, I had the most minutes, minutes played in MLS soccer without ever getting a card. Really? So I was so I was a time waster. Uh -huh. I had coaches that wanted me to waste time, I think, a little bit better and earn those yellow cards. But I was clinging on to a record that I was able to <laughs> that I was able to keep for the rest of my career. So a little fun fact. I was a good time waster, but I wasn't great because I never picked up a yellow card for it. <laughs> Were you a straight A student too? No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> honor roll. I kept the honor roll. I kept it I kept okay. it respectable, but there you go. But yeah, I don't know what happened. I think uh, at some point I got a lot of I got a ton of cards. I got a ton of cards when I played with the Rowdies, and I got a ton of cards when I played in college. I don't know what happened once I once I once I changed up the league a little bit. I don't know uh, what came over me to behave so well. <laughs> Here is that change for FC Tulsa, and it is Bubakar Diallo who makes way for Nathan Worth. So nearly into the final 10 minutes here at Cashman Field. 
since that goal in the 61st minute by Las Vegas and a bit of a subsequent flurry, not a lot of other chances. Tulsa have successfully clamped down a bit and calmed things down since then. And the question is whether Las Vegas can make a late push to make this interesting. Clipped out to that right side. And in with the left foot toward the back post. And what a chance. And Alba put it wide. The flag stayed down. That would have counted. And he dragged it past that near post. Oh, I think they're calling a corner kick here. So it must have been a good little bit of defending here mm. from Tulsa. It's a great ball in. They create this opportunity out wide. Alba finds himself alone on the far post. Let's see about here the defending. Oh, it's a oh, great it? save from the mm. goalkeeper. Does a good job tracking it. It looked like off his foot it went out for a goal kick, but great job by the goalkeeper there, tracking that ball all the way across and keeping himself big. That's an important save at this moment in the game. Yeah, it looked like Michael Creek got it with the right foot. Subsequent corner over the bar and a goal kick. Las Vegas reclaiming another corner. Now it looks like they'll get one. Again, the referee, it's the second time tonight, he pointed for a goal kick, and then after consultation with his assistant referee, gave the corner instead. Nice little wave of pressure here from Vegas. See if they can get something here, make this game super interesting in the last 10 minutes. Serve back post again, punched partially clear. Not out yet, flicked along, still there. Shouts for handball, bodies flying all over the place. It will be a throw and just a throw for Las Vegas. Good bit of goalkeeping here from Creek in the last minute and a half. He hasn't been called into action much, but when he has now in the last 10 minutes of the game, it's a big save. It's a big save on the cross. He stays big with Alba. He's big on the cross here. I think he makes a save on this follow-up as well. Does a good job. Getting a clear out punch, gets himself established on his feet. Always good when a goalkeeper can be busy, especially he hasn't been busy all game, but he's switching on in the last 10 minutes, which you need him the most, especially on the road. That comes on the edge of the area and the Strike from there, always rising and way over the bar from Eddie Baruman. Oh, you don't blame him. You don't blame him for having eyes for the goal, but they've done such a good job of establishing that wave of pressure. With the ball back in the box, you have all your big bodies up there. Maybe something a little bit better from that 35, 40-yard shot from the goal box. I believe that's Las Vegas head coach Dan Dennis Sanchez hollering at his guys. Keep going, guys. It's a good bit of energy here from Vegas here in the last two minutes. It's what you want to see, this, le this little bit of a push. And they gave away a free kick. And that again will allow FC Tulsa to try to slow the pace as much as possible. There he is, Dennis Sanchez. He's an assistant with Austin FC too last year. Part of Sacramento Republic's academy. In fact, he was their academy director. And then an assistant at Charleston Battery in 2022. He's actually the interim coach for the final game of that season. I love the conversation that we had with him. He's, he really went into details about what he's trying to implement here in Vegas and what they're talking about and building. And one of the things they talked about were his North Star values, which is the principles in which they want to which they want to perform tactically, but also the principles that they want in the locker room and what they want as people. Those, were, those North Star values were energy, unity, process, and bravery. And when you play this type of style, those are all things that you need. But more importantly than the style, those are the types of humans, those are the types of people that they want in the locker room, people that believe in those values. And if you have values like that, if that's the foundation of your team, you're gonna be training in the right direction. He hasn't had enough time to really implement what he wants, but if those are your guiding stars, right, for lack of a better term, those are your North Stars of your principles of value, you know that you're gonna be going in the right direction, especially when you're playing in this type of system. Philip Goodrum was fouled, had to come off the pitch for some treatment. Subsequent free kick nodded clear. And this is a Las Vegas side that won just four matches in all of last year. So definitely a, a rebuilding process. Although when you listen to Dennis Sanchez and others in this Las Vegas front office talk, they are not giving themselves that excuse. They expect to be competitive very soon. Been competitive tonight, but so far FC Tulsa more clinical when they've had opportunities. Yeah, I think you talk about it, especially the ownership that's come in. Anytime you have somebody that's, you know, he, he wants to win. He is very clear about it. We saw it in the segment at halftime. He's coming, he wants to win, he, put on, he wants to put on an entertaining product for the fans to come out, and they believe that within their system. This cross ballooned all the way across the face, deflects off the bar. Still alive, knotted back. And the strike was scuffed by Coleman Gannon, who had a really good chance at the end of all that. And it just won't go for Vegas as they try to make this a one goal game and really put Tulsa under some late pressure. It was so close to happening and now there's gonna be a card. 
Oh, no, another man. frantic sequence. Frantic sequence at best, but look at this. Dangerous things happen when you put the ball in the box. He does a good job getting the cross. It's almost an own goal. Tete does a great job of getting a foot to it, but he directs it towards his own goal. Fortunate that it hits the crossbar, and that's what happens. Dangerous things happen when you put the ball in the box. For something like that happening for Tulsa, you have to feel like it's your night. That ball had eyes to the back, and that ends up hitting the crossbar. But if you're Vegas, just keep putting the ball in the box. Keep putting this team under pressure. Try to get, try to cut this lead to one so that you can make the last minutes a little bit nervy for Tulsa. Sean Smart was shown the yellow card for that foul. Final five of the 90. Las Vegas, not surprisingly, showing no quit in this game. Here they come one more time. This time it's Eddie Baruman drawing black shirts in his direction. Looking for Alba up top, wouldn't break for him. Ran away from Gannon, and out of his area comes Austin Warmel to keep it moving. That's where you have to take chances as a team in general, and sometimes as a goalkeeper too. Yeah, he's going to have to play a little bit higher up the field. Give that room for the center back so that they can step in. He's going to, the goalkeeper's going to need to clear up any of these through balls that are coming in. Just start, it's time to start stepping everybody up the field. Maybe you start dumping the ball, making the game a little bit more ugly. Dump the ball into the box, trying to create these second chances. Alba somehow won that between three black shirts. Taken by Ascona. I think he's gotten better and better as this game has gone on. He has, he's settled in. Can they deliver a telling cross here. It was past Alba, still alive with Ascona, whose back heel attempt looking for Ngondo, I think. Had to be tracked down by Hayden Sargis. Chance here. Forward they come again. Edge of the box, left footed strike, blocked. Suahi was in the way. And then another attempt from distance, skitters wide. JC and Gondo. It did take a deflection though, did it? Looks, Looks like, like it did. Yeah, here. it is a corner. So a Jarito's corner kick for Las Vegas Lights. Still time for them to set up a frantic finish. Again taken by Coleman Gannon. Scooped up high, bouncing all the way through, and claimed well by Michael Creek. Never want to let the ball bounce in your own defensive box, but FC Tulsa get away with it here. Yeah, they did a good job. After the ball bounced, they did a good job of getting a body on the player with the header, and Creek does a good job of controlling his box. And you talked about time wasting tactics. That's always a good one. When the ball goes up in the air, no one's around you, and you lay on the ground like you're, <laughs> like you're being surrounded by people. That's always a good one there. So a little bit of time wasting there from the goalkeeper who, in the last 10 minutes, he had, to be fair, he really didn't have much to do up until the last 10 minutes of the game. But he's come up big. And that's what you need from your goalkeeper, especially on the road when you're trying to protect the lead. Sam Akay. Alba. Sam Akay again. See, Tulsa can smell a season opening three points on the road. So early, of course, but it'd be a big boost for them to start in this way if they can finish it off. Sam McKay tripped and fouled. FC Tulsa felt that shouldn't have been the case, but Worth has shown the yellow card and a late attacking free kick for Las Vegas in the final minute of the 90. We'll see how much stoppage time is still to come. Yeah, it looks like Worth just trips him up here a little bit. Not really a necessary foul. I think that they had it under control, but anytime if you're an attacking player, anytime if you if you feel that contact in a dangerous area, it's smart to go down, put the pressure on the ref to make the call. And again, another dangerous set piece in a dangerous area for Las Vegas to make this game a little bit more interesting until the final whistle. Again, on this narrow pitch, Coleman Gannon could go for goal from here. Yeah, that near post, that near post looks a little bit open. Be careful here if you're the goalkeeper. Gannon instead tries to bend it back post, and that is easy for Michael Creek. 
chance to fall on it. Take more time off the clock as we await the fourth official's announcement of how many minutes will be added on. And the answer is five. Definitely enough time to make something a little bit interesting here if you're Vegas, but when you get those opportunities like those set pieces, you want to make a little bit more of them. You saw that the goalkeeper was high off his line and ultimately the cross went right to him. You want to try to find that gap between the goalkeeper and the back line or, like you said, be a little bit brave. That near post was open. Why not have a hit? It's a smaller pitch. You never know what can happen if you put the ball on target. Alba chasing this. And Alba might get there. And Michael Creek in the end had to make a save right on the edge of his area. Good, brave goalkeeping there. You have a big forward target and down like that. You hit the ground. Keep yourself big, get a touch on the ball. That's good, brave goalkeeping there from Creek. But a little bit of miscommunication, it seemed like, from the center back. Alba almost got on the end of that one. Yeah, Rashid Tete was expecting Creek to come for that ball a little earlier. Those balls are so difficult between the center back and the goalkeeper because if you're the goalkeeper, you're looking at the center back like, are you going to kick it? You're closer than I am. Are you going to kick it? And if you're a center back, you're trying to shield up that forward, and you're thinking to yourself, when are you going to come and get this ball because I have a forward barreling down my back? So just a little bit of clearer communication will clear up those problems, but... Those in-between balls are always difficult between the center back and goalkeeper to make sure you're on the same page. Late substitution for Las Vegas. Sean Smart making way for Malik Howell. Just a few minutes of stoppage time remaining. FC Tulsa with the two goals in the first half, one 10 minutes into the second half. Survived the reply from Alba. Are very close to inching their way across the finish line. It's not a particularly helpful ball back in this case. At some point here, if you're Vegas, you gotta start dumping the ball in the box, get the numbers up, try to establish that pressure, play a long ball, find that big target forward. Alba's done really well since he came on, not just with the goal, his hold up play, his ability to win flicks and keep possession. Be a big confidence boost for him. Hasn't quite been enough for his side so far. Baruman. And that spins across the end line and will be a late corner. Rito's corner kick, third minute of stoppage time. Coleman Gannon will take one more. Roughly in front of that supporter section. Gannon onto the six, good header away. Alba chases it down. Switch back to Gannon. Gannon. With the right, took a deflection off Goodrum. It'll be another corner. Good pressure here from Vegas. We talked about Ngano being such a difference in this game for Vegas and what he means. Gathers the ball on top of the box, finds it wide, creates the opportunity, draws another corner here for Goodrum with that one-on-one -on -one take. Flick toward the near post, still alive. See Tulsa do enough and scoop it away. Credit Tulsa here these last 10 minutes or so. They've sustained this pressure. They haven't been flying. They've been sitting in this block. They've been dealing with crosses. Credit Tulsa for riding this one out the way that they have so far. Down by Howell. Just over a minute remaining of the minimum five allotted. Another solid header away by Alexi Suahi. And then a little wrestling match, and that just might be enough to get Tulsa over the line. Yellow card, I believe, was shown to Eddie Baruman in this final minute of stoppage time. A little bit of frustration there for Baruman late in the game. Instead of having to chase that long ball, he opts for the foul, but that's understandable. A little bit of frustration down two goals in the home opener. Love to take this to the corner flag if they could. They'll have a throw instead. That's just as good. What a night Philip Goodrum has had. The goal early on, and he's been involved in so much on both sides of the ball.
Now the ball to the corner flag. Didn't quite go out of play. We've had the five minutes. We'll see how much further Brandon Stevis allows this to go. And the answer is no further. There's the final whistle and a perfect start to 2024 for the Golden White. FC Tulsa begin a new era by leaving Las Vegas with a very nice victory in their season opener. Yeah, for FC Tulsa, that's a great way to start the season, especially when you're talking about what they want to implement. They want to be attacking-minded. They want to be able to turn teams over and go straight to the goal. And that's where all three goals came from. It's a great start to the era, great start to the season. And exactly what he was talking about and what they want to implement is exactly what you saw. And if you're Las Vegas on the flip side, you're implementing a new system, a possession-based system that's going to be a little bit challenging for you to establish. I think you saw bits and flashes. You saw opportunities of what it's going to create. When you talk about what it's going to create, we talk about the player of the match, Ricky Alba, who was able to get on the receiving end of one of those crosses that you're able to build out through that possession. You get create those 1v1s for your special players. He's able to get on the receiving end of the cross and substitute. So a good night from him. Not the result that they wanted for the team, but personally, he was able to get that good goal. He earned him the player of the match. But like we said, with Las Vegas, you're trying to implement a new system. You saw bits and pieces of it. You saw flashes of it. And when they're able to bring it together, it's going to be an exciting product to watch. Yeah, they will be very fun to watch going forward. They'll be right back at it next week. In a moment, we'll come back with stats and highlights and wrap things up from Cashman Field. It ends tonight, FC Tulsa 3, Las Vegas Lights 1. Oficial de policía en Henderson y ex capitán del equipo de Las Vegas Lights. Estoy orgulloso de haber sido un donante vivo y que mi madre fue una beneficiada con un riñón. El 85% de los americanos en la lista de espera necesitan un trasplante de riñón. Los nevadenses damos esperanza. Únete a nosotros en wearenevadans.org. Silver State Schools Credit Union, we help you celebrate life's little moments and guide you through the big ones. Earn 2% cash back on every purchase with our Cashback Rewards credit card. Silver State Schools Credit Union, your financial partner for life. Mi raza bonita. Desde 1991 hemos compartido nuestras tradiciones mexicanas. Desde muy temprano nuestros panaderos empiezan a elaborar los bolillos mmm, y el pan dulce. Y las tortillas todos los días salen calientitas. Le digo algo, mi raza bonita. Lo que está hecho en la bonita, está hecho en Las Vegas. This match has been presented by America First Credit Union, Desert Radiology, and by U.S. Bank. And it ended tonight in a 3-1 victory for the visitors from Tulsa. FC Tulsa over Las Vegas Lights. Our save of the match presented by Nevada Donor Network. Remember, you can save a life at registerme.org. And it was this one early on in the first half. It's a great save here by Warmo. He's able to keep his feet moving. It's so challenging to do as a goalkeeper. You're reading the cross. You want to re it takes a wicked deflection. Able to keep his feet moving, get his big, big bare paw out of there, swat that ball as far as he possibly can. Look at how challenging this is as a goalkeeper. He takes that crazy deflection, able to move your feet. Great goalkeeping there for Mormo to keep his team in the game there with that save. Highlights from this evening's game. And it started early for FC Tulsa as they took the lead in the 11th minute on this gorgeous cross and this finish from Stojanovic. Tulsa does a good job of being in that attack mode from the beginning of the game. We talked about Rodgers early in the game, his ability to cross the ball and put the ball on a silver platter for his target forward. Stojanovic makes no mistake in front of the net, and this really set the tempo for the rest of the game. Tulsa was relentless in their pressure. They were relentless in the attack when they had the opportunities in front of the net. Rodgers with a clinical cross, clinical finish on the other end. And you talk about clinical. Let's watch this goal number two here. It's a little bit of a junkie ball. The ball is bouncing around a little bit. Eventually, Tulsa is able to settle the ball, and the ball ends up at the player of a foot that you want it to be. Good run with an absolute laser to make this a 2-0 game. Look at this. He takes his touch, picks his head up, hits an absolute pill. You cannot strike a ball better than that. Take notes, kids. That's exactly how you want to draw it up to set Tulsa up for 2-0. They would make it three in the second half. Well, they almost made it three there. That one clipped off the top of the bar by Blaine Ferry. 
We saw a lot of things from Tulsa tonight straight off the training pitch. This was an example of one of those set pieces that you saw. They saw something at the near post. Almost comes off for him, but this one absolutely did. Yosef is the one that was able to put the third goal in the back of the net. Again, they reestablished that wave of pressure. Yosef finds himself 1v1 outside, makes no mistake about it. Left foot across the face of the goal mouth, tucks it into that back corner. Las Vegas pulled one back in the 61st. Good work from Escona. And a good finish from close range by Alba, who had just come onto the pitch. As Conor does a good job here, and when he really started to settle into the game, you saw a difference for Las Vegas. He's taking players on, and here's the, he's able to create an opportunity for his teammate, Alba, who does a great job coming in off the bench. Those replay clips were presented by Great Clips. These post-game stats are brought to you by U.S. Bank. Shots pretty even in the end. You see the possession heavily in Las Vegas' favor, but we expected that, and again, FC Tulsa made the most of theirs very clinically on the road. You're right. I think that this, these stats completely accurately dictate what happened in the game because Las Vegas, they want to keep possession. They had 60% possession last week, ultimately they lost 2-1. to one. This week they had 71% possession, but Tulsa's okay with that. They were okay sitting back, trying to make advantage of the counterattack. And at, at a moment in the game, there was a moment where Tulsa had three shots on three shots on goal with three goals, which if anytime you're being clinical like that, you're in that attack minded, you're in that attack mode. That's what Tulsa was able to do tonight. It was a great start for Tulsa in their season. And if you're Las Vegas, you have some things to figure out. We saw some flashes, but we got to make use of that possession in dangerous areas. Well, again, as Jose Bautista looked on tonight, his new ownership era, not the result he wanted, but there will be plenty of good results still to come for Las Vegas this year and in the future. But it was FC Tulsa's night in their opening night in 2024. Their new era begins in an ideal fashion from them. For our entire crew, for Jeff Adanella, I'm Donnie Barnes. It finishes tonight, FC Tulsa 3, Las Vegas Lights 1. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.